hello there hi welcome to the open day um welcome to media and communication at leicester and i'm tracy simmons i'm the admissions tutor for media and communications um i want to welcome you all thank you for coming along so um what i'm going to cover is uh tell you a bit about the school and why why you should study media at leicester and our background and some of the work that we do and then I'll say a bit more about the modules uh, that we have, so the kind of topics that we have and how we teach you. Um, I'll say a bit more about the support we offer you and employability in careers, because that's obviously very important. And then um, there'll be an opportunity for you to, to ask questions and um, hopefully cover all the information you need to know. So. Um, why study at media and communication well this this slide shows some of the books that have been published by academic staff um you will see that there's a range of of different topic areas and and research specialism within the school um so you'll see these are the covers of books so there's there's work on science and entertainment and television documentary uh, Brexit, Trump and the media, sustainable development and communication, global food networks, tweenhood, gender, media and voice, fake news, language and politics, international public relations. So that's just a snapshot. That's just a quick overview of some of the research in the school. There's lots of research ongoing, uh, colleagues engaged in, in uh, different areas of expertise. And I think what's what's important for you to know is that research feeds into our teaching uh, and that's why we are able to offer you a range of specialist modules that you'll see in our option modules um, which should cover a, a wide variety of aspects of the media that you may be interested in so we've got specialists in PR we've got journalists by background who are now academics um, we've got specialists in in sort of popular culture documentary all of these different areas so that that feeds into our teaching so it's it's a diverse research environment we've got colleagues with with very particular specialisms um and that all again feeds into the kind of um, topics that we teach you and the the type of expertise we have so that just gives you a little bit of idea about that and then just to tell you a bit about Leicester. So Leicester's had a long history of, of teaching media. And I guess the Centre for Mass Communication Research, which was established in 1966, was one of the first uh, teaching and research centres in the UK. Um, media is a very sort of young discipline in terms of it parallels really the development of media in itself. So in comparison to other disciplines, it's quite young, it's still quite new. Um, and um, it was called Centre for Mass Communication Research because that was the kind of terms that we used to describe the media at that time. It was sort of describing the media environment, which was about broadcast media, television and, and radio and, and, and mass media and, and newspapers. So, um, but we're now called uh, the department we're now called the school of media communication we were the department of media and communication now we're the school of media communication and sociology so we have our sociology colleagues that are part of our our school and um we've expanded in terms of uh staff so there's we've, we're quite a, a an established school in terms of uh staff and they are very diverse not only in terms of the research that they offer and the teaching that they offer but in terms of their backgrounds uh, specialisms also where they are from from which parts of the world they're from because we're very international in terms of our staff uh, cohort as well as our student cohort so um as i've said there's a there's a range of different um topic areas that we have expertise in whether it's film television radio advertising journalism pr cultural theory documentary environmental communication global media social media video game video games etc um, and I'll, I'll i'll show you that in terms of the the topic areas so this is just a very very basic um overview of um the course structure so this is year one 
uh, where you have compulsory modules. So in year one, you everybody takes the same modules. Um, but you'll see um, as you go through year two and in your final year, you take option modules. So year two, you can take two option modules and in your final year for optional modules. And you also have the dissertation, which is a big piece of work that you do at the end. So that's just the, the bare bones of what you do um, for the BA Media and Communication. And I'll, I'll flesh out a bit more about the, the modules themselves. Pretty similar if you do, this is our BA Media Society and Culture. This is our joint degree with sociology colleagues. Um, and pretty similar year one, you've got compulsory modules. Year two, you've also got um, some compulsory modules, but you also take optional modules. So there's four optional modules you can see there. And then in your final year, you do a dissertation or a research project and then four optional modules. So as you get into your second and third year, you're picking up more optional modules. And I'll, I'll explain a bit about the optional modules, but um, that just kind of gives you an overview of, of what to expect in terms of the um, core structure. So this, this is just about what we call roots of specialism. So as I said, in, within the school, we've got um, specialist colleagues um, in, in mass communication, more generally in media and communication. We've got film specialists, media practice. I'll explain about the media practice and of course, digital media. And you'll see that reflected in the option modules. So it, if you have a real interest in digital media, say after, your first year you really want to do more modules related to digital media as I'll show you that there are those option modules available to you if you perhaps you want to do more film um you're interested in film there those option modules are also available um so what we mean by this is there's a a, a route you can take through the the degree over the years particularly year two and year three which can be based on your own particular areas of interest. So this is year one module. So we've got these, these as I say, are, co are compulsory. So we've got introduction to media and communication, which I hope is fairly self-explanatory. And then we've got something called digital storytelling. Now that is a practice based module. Um, so you work in what we call the media lab or the media practice room which is Astley Clark. We're based in Astley Clark on, on, on the Leicester campus. And this is our own space where students can um, make short films and documentaries. So part of what you do for digital storytelling is you make a digital narrative. You use di digital uh, still images to produce a narrative, a story around that. So you'd be based up in our media lab and we have technicians, we have uh, a media practitioner, who would support you and help you through that that process and digital storytelling as i say is practice based module because that's where you make content uh, but it is also academic in the sense that you're reflecting on the decisions that you'll make you're thinking about the process of creating a digital narrative and, and, and story so that's that's our practice base um module and then media origins this is about the different types of media and how they've developed over time uh, global media is is about the transnational nature of, of media content creative audiences about how we engage with media content and how we interpret it and and of course shape it um, and studying media and communication alongside introduction to academic skills they're there to sort of help you um, reflect on your um, and, and help you with the your academic skills on the course because many of you um, will have to get to grips with the specific academic skills you need which is about referencing citation essay writing some of this might be familiar with you if you've come through a level route but some of you may be coming in lots of different ways into the the degree so we want to have modules that help you particularly in year one to get used to the different kinds of ways that you write and reference uh, and use sources in 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 terms of academic skills so that's just an overview of year one uh, and the compulsory uh, modules that you take. 
Um, this is again the joint degree we do with sociology, BA Media Society and Culture, pretty similar in terms of the same sort of introductory modules, but you'll see that the, the ones asterisked or starred cyber sociology, power, privilege and diversity, society and transformation, they're the sociological modules that you would take as part of um, year one. So with that with that degree, you have a balance of media content and, and more sociological focused uh, module content. Um, but, you know, media and sociology are, are very interdisciplinary, very and they overlap each other in, in very particular ways. But this degree gives you a particular for a balance between the media content and, and the sociology content. So that, that's your year one. And then year two, as I said, you get much more opportunities to pick up option modules. Um, so uh, digital media in everyday life. This is the everyday ways that we use digital media, production of news, how the news is constructed, how um, journalists and, and news practices make the news. Um, media research and practice. This is to help you think about research methods and how people have researched the media. Television studies, hopefully that, that's pretty clear that that's different debates around uh, television, genre, content, style, trends within kind of uh, television. Um, journalism, again, that, that's run by colleagues who have a background in journalism. Political communication, how uh, politicians use, use the media, communicate their ideas. Identity and popular culture, this is the module I teach on. Um, covers all aspects of popular culture, big debates about gender, race, class, sexuality, um, how how we relate uh, our identity uh, through the media, how we mediate it, and of course popular cultural debates around representation. Global film culture, again the transnational nature of, of film culture. Um, now, introduction to filmmaking is again another practice based module. So this follows from the one in year one. This is where you make a documentary that you're based up in the media lab. And you work with a technician and you work with a, a practitioner again and you work in small groups to make a film and it's about you working together as a small group. One of you might be editing, one of you might be involved in lighting and it also has an academic component in the sense that you um, learn to reflect on the process of, of, of filmmaking as well as making content. Working in creative industries, again, the creative industry is such an important part of the media. And professionalism and employment in the media is our employability module that's connected to media. This is about you thinking about the skills that you gain on the course, academic skills, but how they're transferable. Um, to um, the world of work and how you can best present that. So that's year two. And then the final year, um, there's lots and lots of modules in the final year um, and there are lots of option modules. So hopefully there's something that interests you. You'll notice, as I say, that if you're interested in digital media, there's a module about that. If you're interested in film, there is a module that you can take in year three. So um, you know, everything from environmental communication, obviously climate change is a big issue. So this module explores that, but how people are communicating those issues through the media. Uh, global cultures, transnational nature of the media. Um, film, there's some film um, modules there, popular culture, celebrity fan culture, gender. Uh, you'll see that there's journalism as well. So if you're interested in journalism, you can um, continued that interest in, in your third year. PR as well, which um, reflects again um, expertise in the school around PR, advertising and consumer culture. Just to pick out another module, um, which is community radio in practice, that's where you go to a local community radio station in Leicester and again you make a, a community radio programme and you work as a small group and you work with people who work in, in community radio practitioners. Um, so that again is using your practice based skills, but reflecting on academic skills. So it's thinking about what kind of community you are making a show for and how you best appeal to that, that community. So that's your final year module. So you've, you've got quite a lot of choice in your final year. 
and um, also you have your dissertation as well that you you would do as part of your your last piece of work you do in your final year. So teaching and assessment. So um, lectures, we we have lectures. Um, we have seminars, seminars are small group, more interactive um, ways that we teach you. Uh, we have workshops, we have tutorials, all staff offer tutorials to help you with assessment and um, we have office hours. You're able to see us either face to face. Um, we're based in Ashley Clark on, on campus. You can come um, and, and see your tutors there or you can uh, see us through Teams. We use Teams now. One of the things that we found really useful during the pandemic is how convenient Teams is. So um, often for students who are commuting, we, we do that. Um, but you can see us face to face, you can see us online, whatever's easiest for you, whatever works for you. Um, and we have regular office hours. And in terms of um, assessment, we have essays, which some of you may be familiar with in terms of having done A-levels, presentations. Some of that is in group or in pairs or individual. Practical projects, written reports, short pieces of work. Um, obviously, you make content for um, the digital storytelling and the filmmaking modules and later on you have the dissertation. So that's that's the kind of assessment that you'll you'll have. This is just an overview of the academic year. We're in semester one at the moment, so that runs up until December. Then we break for Christmas. Semester two starts January through to April. We have the Easter break. Um, and often you know, sort of from December through to January, April through the Easter break. That is what we often call a, an assessment period. We used to call it an exam period, but we don't actually have that many exams now. Um, so that that is often a time period where you'll be working on your assignments. 11 weeks of teaching per semester and you would expect three modules per semester. And it's usually works out roughly um, nine hours of attending lectures and seminars per week, but it does vary because some of the modules like the television module, the film module, um, they might have screenings with them. So they might they might be longer because film or television shows may may take up a bit of time in the screenings. But that's sort of roughly what you can expect with with the academic year. Now we have a study abroad opportunities. We have a BA year abroad. Um, we've been running a um, study abroad option for, for many, many, many years. We obviously had to pause it because of the pandemic, but we're back offering um, the opportunity to study abroad. These are two of our partner institutions. You'll see that they're in Europe, uh, the Netherlands, Rotterdam and in Germany. Um, we also offer other uh, study abroad options um, we have done in the past to Canada, uh, to America. Um, so we will we'll be updating the details with study abroad. So there may well be when you join us more opportunities, more places that you can go to. But our, our study abroad programme is up and running. So um, in terms of support, um, you have personal tutors. Everybody gets a personal tutor when they when they come to Leicester and we try to keep the personal tutor with you throughout your studies. Um, student representation each year, each cohort um, has a student within the within their class who is there to represent and be your voice and feedback to us any issues and we can feed back any issues through your representative. Um, we have brilliant support admin support within the school. They they can answer emails pretty quickly and help you um, navigate all kinds of issues around your assignments and, and make sure that you're, you've got all the help and support there. Um, and of course, within the university, there's there's support. So there's the support within the school with through our um, through our personal tutors and you also have a senior tutor as well. But also uh, centrally, the university has, you know, welfare, support services, careers, uh, support students union so there's there's lots of ways that we can help you okay this is just a bit about our employability in careers so we have something called the Leicester award which we run with um, the career service but it's um, customized specifically for media students as well so we we run it alongside our modules uh, and students really 
as part of the Leicester Award, it, it's to give you that certification, it's to give you that sort of kite mark that through your course you have developed skills that are transferable to the world of work and that you can best represent them on your CV, that you are best able to articulate them. Um, so that's really what the Leicester Award is and that's something that's embedded in our, our programme. So in terms of career destinations, students go to all kinds of sectors, media related sectors. Uh, this is just a snapshot of some of the things that students have gone on to do. Journalists, media researcher, PR, social media manager. And these are some of the organisations that they've worked for. Some are obviously very, you know, obviously media, BBC, Sky Media. Some are, you know, graduate based positions such as HMRC. The basic thing is that any institutional organisation, commercial, public service, they want smart graduates who understand the media, that know how to communicate, who know how to use social media. There is no institution or organisation that is, you know, that needs to, people to communicate and use social media effectively. They all need that. Um, so, um, you know, it's it's a it's a broad area of opportunities because many, many organisations need smart switched on people who understand um, social media and how to communicate. Uh, this is just a bit more information about um, where students go after 15 months after graduation. Uh, half are working full time, 25% uh, working part time. Uh, some are working in studies, some go on to do a, a master's. Thankfully, a very small uh, percentage uh, are unemployed. So um, we, we managed to get students um, up and running into the world of work. And this is just a graph on, on outcomes in terms of sectors where people go to. So um, you can probably see that, but you'll see that art design and media professionals, that's a, a big area, 21%. And marketing public relations and sales professionals, that's 29% and then other occupations. So there's quite a broad range of, of sectors, but a PR is, is one that and marketing is a big area that many people um, end up working in or art design. The creative industries is another area that we that is flagged on there. Um, this is just a bit more information. Lots of our students that go on to do masters, we we have masters programs within the school. If you want to stay at Leicester, but many of our students go on to do uh, masters programs, MSCs as well, further postgraduate uh, study. So this this is just a little snapshot of of the career support. So we we run a festival uh, festival of careers. So we invite uh, speakers, we invite companies and organisations to come and and talk with you and and tell tell you a bit about um, what they're looking for in terms of of graduates and what they can offer as as employers. Um, and so this this is the sort of sessions that we run. So you see that that can include. Uh, media and creative industries and, and careers in teaching and also the non-profit sector as well, uh, charity. So um, we, we include a whole range of different sort of um, sectors within that. All right, just some things to flag for 2023 that are in the pipeline, as they say. So we, we've been developing what more joint degrees. So we have um, obviously our, our joint degree with sociology, but media and journalism, a BA Media and Journalism and also we have coming in the pipeline and hopefully that will be coming through very soon. Um, one of our partners is going to be the NHS and we're going to run a creative practice module with our undergraduate programme where students can create you know, industry communication uh, content for the NHS. Um, and that's obviously very highly professional because the NHS is an important organisation um, and, and that's something that we're, we're planning very soon and that will be you'll be working with practitioners and that's to give students a real opportunities to work with a very respective organisation like the NHS to produce content. All right, so this is how you can get in touch with us. So, um, you know, MSC inquiries is, is the email there. 
um, you know, get in touch uh, through that email inbox. That's monitored all the time. Um, my details are also on the on the web page for the school, but um, MSC inquiries get get in touch. And and um, if you've got any questions, you want to come and see us or ask us something, then that's that's the email. And there's also a number and, and the, the links there. And we've got um, a presence on Facebook and on Twitter. So I hope that was useful and um, interesting. And and um, you know, any questions, you're very you're very welcome to to ask away. Thank you so much, Tracy. So I've just posted uh, as a reminder to those that are attending today to, to please post any questions into the chat for you. And uh, that was extremely informative in terms of giving an overview of what does our course entail. And I just wanted to start because I think it could be quite thought provoking to ask, what do you think is our greatest USP here at uh, University of Leicester? And what do you think it is that we do so differently to elsewhere? Meaning, you know, why should students mm, come yeah. and choose us? Yeah, well, I think we have good optionality. So there's a lot of choice there. Um, so whatever your interests are, um, especially in the second and third year, you can choose areas of interest that, that you are really interested in. So maybe you, you get a sense of I'm really interested in the journalism modules or or maybe you sort of more drawn to the kind of film modules. So um, I think that optionality, that diversity of modules is something that I think is special to us. And also that we have the, the year abroad programme that's very popular um, part of our programme. So I think choice and diversity of, of content you know you're not there, there should be pretty much something that everybody will find interesting uh, among, amongst the modules thank you for that um, and one thing i just wanted us to talk a little bit more about was in relation to whether we have any entry requirements to be able to get onto our course you know so what are we looking for and um i guess tied in with that on a subject basis what are the best subjects, if you could call it that, that would prepare a student to really excel and succeed on a media and communications related degree programme? OK, so ABB is, our, is, is sort of what we're looking for, um, but we, you know, accept students who have a range of um, entry points in, in, into the degree so that we have students with different kinds of qualification, not just A levels that that, that come onto the degree and um, the admissions team are very good at sort of um, uh, getting get, getting applications to me and saying, you know, this is what they've got. This is, you know, where they've got an EPQ um, uh, as, as part of their qualification. So if you hit our tariff, then that that's kind of the main thing. But what we're interested in is in basic terms, um, if you've done a um, subject area in media, that's really great. So if you've done an A level or AS level in, in media, that, that, that's that's fabulous or sociology or any of the social science um, subject areas that will certainly help you. But it's not absolutely crucial, but it will certainly help your case. So if you don't quite make the tariff, maybe you're a bit short of, of, of your overall um, points. Um, if I can see that you know you've you've studied media or you've studied um, sociology, then that 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 should help you. And also, we are interested in the personal statements. We want to see people who are interested in the the topic, who are motivated to to study. Um, and if you've been engaged in making some content, um, I know that many applicants, many prospective students. Um, you know, how are making short videos or, or have blogs or doing. I had a, a prospective student who did film reviews online. So all of that is, is really helpful and that they're sort of the things that we, we want to see. Right, so I'm hoping we're obviously going to get some real interest from the people that are attending today. We've got a couple of questions that have come okay. in. One is around um, the second and third year compulsory and optional modules. You obviously, yeah. you obviously showed us for the media and communications yeah. pathway, and they're inquiring whether those are the same for the society, media and culture pathway. Um, they're pretty similar, but um, what is different with the joint degree with sociology is you also have sociology 
um, option modules. So they're they're more sociologically um, focused. So I don't know if they were all on the slide, but you'll have um you'll have actually have even more choice if you're doing the um, BA Media Society and Culture degree because you'll have so sociological option modules as well alongside the media ones. And the idea is that you kind of have a balance bet between the two. So um, I, I hope that that makes sense. Definitely. And I'm sure if people have still got questions, they'll keep posting them in if that's a follow up from something that you've said. Um, we've got a question, I guess, going back a bit more to admissions um, mm -hmm. inquiring how many applications do you get a year? And then what is, I guess, the ratio of how many places there are on the media and communications course? OK, I'll confess I don't know <laughs> because um, the set, the central team deal deal with um, admissions um, uh, and they they sort of monitor how how many are, are coming through and they would let uh, let me know as admissions tutor if we were getting you know if we had lots and lots of applications coming through and and, and limited spaces um so I, I can't I can't give you an honest answer to that because I, I don't get to see that side of things um but we we have Roughly our cohort size, size is around between sort of 60 to 80 students um, and that can include, you know, sociology students and, and journalism uh, students. Some years it's bigger, some years it's it, it's it's slightly less. It all varies. Sometimes we have more journalist students, more sociology students, so it, it can fluctuate. Um, but if if we we have to keep the course size, I mean we don't have like a, a a a sort of concrete limit in terms of numbers, but we are keen to keep the cohort around kind of eighty because we want to ensure that students can have access to all the facilities, particularly the media lab, and and make sure that they've got access to the, all of the equipment. Um, so that that's kind of roughly the the cohort size. So. Um, as of yet, we've we've never really had to um, stop applications at any point. They come in steady over the academic year. Uh, occasionally, we we sort of go into the clearing um, period as well. But that's roughly the cohort side. So I, I can't give you an exact figures, but that comes through the, our central team. Thank you for that. And um, we have got a question that I've asked: Is there a place or a website where? Um, the specific media citing cultural modules are listed. So actually, I'm going to ask oh. you another question, Tracy, and I'm going to post that into the chat just for the direct link okay. for the person who's asked that. Um, but you can literally just look on our University of Leicester website and yeah. search on our forward slash study, which enlists our different course areas and oh, you'll yes, be able so. to see. Um, but I'll, I'll put yeah. that in the chat so people can obviously directly yes, link yeah. to that. Yeah, yes. Um, my those. my question I wanted to ask you to see if we get any more coming through is um in relation to what would you describe or how would you tell us about a typical week for let's say I know there's mm. the distinction between the courses here, but yes. let's say for a media and communication student, what does a typical week look like? Yeah. So um you can sort of expect to have um sort of let Obviously, you have three modules, so you would have uh, your lectures around those three modules per semester. And what we tend to do in terms of time tabling is you'll sort of have your your lectures um, early in the week, so the sort of first half of the week, and then we have seminars that run and follow that. You might have seminars within the, the same day, so it might be you have a lecture in the morning on um media identity and the popular and then there'll be seminars later on after a break in, in later on on the afternoon all depends on the size or, or group of each module and the timetabling but we tend to run sort of the the seminars later in the week because they follow the the content of, of the lectures and we also tend to keep wednesday afternoons free we try not to have lectures and uh, seminars late into wednesday because that's clubs and societies day so that's the day when you can sort of join whatever club and society you, you want to join so you can expect you know perhaps a couple of hours of, of lectures in the morning maybe a seminar in the afternoon um throughout the week we we tend to keep things fairly scattered across across the week in terms of of, of term time 
uh, timetabling. So, um, and you might have screenings as well. So it might be if you're doing a television module or a film module, um, you'll you'll have a screening uh, session around that as well. Um, if you're doing one of the practice based modules, that's a bit more. Obviously, you have scheduled classes, but there there is also a period of where you're editing and working on content, and and so um, that might be a bit more intensive. Wonderful. And then I've got two last questions I'm going to ask you um, before we'll we'll wrap up for today. Um, one, I think it could be quite a quick one for you to answer is whether there's a specific number of students that have to sign up for some of those optional modules for them to run. And I guess the question is, have you ever not run some in the past as a result of those signing up? The only time we've ever not run option modules is if if the person leading it is, is seriously ill um, and, and, and they can't they can't run it. And that doesn't happen very often, but in some cases and, and you know, if they're, they're very ill, um, uh, they, they can't take it. But I think even in those scenarios, we, we've we've been able to offer an alternative. Um, but generally they, they, they run, the option modules run. Um, and in terms of minimum numbers, you know, if if there's only a couple of students that are signed up, then that that doesn't really sort of make sense to run it. But this very rarely happens, really, in terms of the cohort size. We, we generally um, run option modules. Um, it's only if, if 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 a member of staff who is very specialist to that module is ill, um, then that's the only time we we don't run them. But the most times we they they go ahead um and yes they vary in size you know we do have some option modules that are a bit smaller but that's not a bad thing because um that that gives you that opportunity to have um sort of uh really good uh tutorials but we also have big 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 option modules that are very popular as well so generally the option modules run because we know it's really important that if students want a module that that, that they run Thank you for that. Um, I'm, I've just got to post a little link, um, which I think will be quite useful as a, as a reference for people to have a look into. Obviously, Tracy, who's an academic with us here today, is sharing some really valuable insight about major communications. And we've also got a, a video that is a subject spotlight on media studies run by Dr. Jilly Kay, who's one of our other academics at the yeah. university, and it's run in conjunction with SpringPod. So if you don't see the University of Leicester website when you search subject spotlight, University of Leicester Media Studies, it's just it's run through SpringPod, which is the company. So I've just posted it in the chat for people to have a little bit of a look, a look at as it's obviously a little bit like a taste of subject, isn't it? In, mm, in, yeah. in some ways. And yeah. um, yeah. whereas obviously Tracy Hill, we've got with us, has given us an overview of studying specifically with us. So I'm gonna gonna let us finish on this last question, Tracy, and obviously thank you so much for your time. Is um to to answer for one of our members of the attendees today. What's the main difference that you would say between media and communications and those that would opt for a society media and culture degree? Okay, so the the, the main difference is obviously um the media society culture is it has that balance of sociological uh content and uh media content and there are you know there are overlaps about it um but the idea is that you if if you're perhaps you you both you know perhaps you like media and sociology and you're interested in both areas then that joint degree covers both media content and and sociology content so you're more kind of sociological focused um, modules but there are lots of overlaps because um I was teaching one of the sociology uh, modules the other day and 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 that was on um that's a, a gender module uh, and we have media and gender modules but this was looking more at the sociological debates and theories rather than specifically media so that that would be the main difference so if you feel like you don't want to choose between media and sociology that that's what that degree is for Thank you so much to everybody who's joined us and attended here today. Um, we, I just wanted to give you a highlight that this will be shared on our YouTube page so you'll be able to access the recording of this in the new year. And just a huge thank you 
to yourself, Tracy, for talking in a little bit more detail about what we have on offer here in relation to media and communications. Enjoy the rest of your evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your questions.